This time on Distant Shores, we look at using radar to avoid the worst winds in a serious storm rounding Cape Hatteras, do a gear review on our electric in-mast furling after a year of hard use, and sail north to Annapolis in the Chesapeake Bay. We leave Beaufort and head out the inlet to the ocean, then east to the excellent anchorage at Cape Lookout. This spacious anchorage is a great stop for a day or two wait for weather, and you can even get ashore to climb the lighthouse mid-May through mid-September. We have a day to work on video editing, then head to sea with a nice forecast for a sail first around Cape Lookout, then on overnight to Cape Hatteras before the weather deteriorates. We get a good start. But after the first night, the forecast changes for bad weather to build sooner and come stronger on our second day at sea. We're going around 5.35 p.m. Other locations impacted by these severe thunderstorms include Vicksville, Adams Grove, Grizzard, Gumforts, Crossroads. For your protection, move to an interior room on the lowest floor of a building. Please report severe weather by calling 757-899-2415, posting to the National Weather Service Wakefield Facebook page. To an interior lower room. I think they're saying possible tornadoes. As the wind rises and the sky darkens ahead, we reef both the main and jib. With our mast height of 71 feet, there is no place we can pull in along this coast until we reach Rudy Inlet at Virginia Beach. So reefed down, we carry on. Even in daylight hours, we still keep a regular watch schedule so we know who's responsible if someone wants to pop below for a snack. one went right in front of us. This one here looks just like we get 35 or 40 knots and some heavy rain, but right up front looks ferocious. Radar is an excellent tool for plotting storms. On the left, we're looking at the coast of Cape Hatteras, and then the storm cell passing right in front of us. We've set the radar at the six mile range, so the heavy rains are about two miles ahead. The radar has helped us dodge the worst of the storm, then it's just a few more miles to our planned stop for the night. That's good, we get in with the last of the light, so we're not entering this in the dark. Place. And this is a little Rudy or Ruddy inlet. Uh, the first place you can really get into after coming around the big patterns. So this is a very tight little corner with room for about one boat to anchor and have space to swing. We'll get the hook down and have a nice dinner, I think. I'm just going forward to drop the anchor. Entering 
Entering the Chesapeake Bay, we've arrived at one of the best cruising grounds in the USA with protected waters and so many creeks, bays, and anchorages to explore. We stop in at Solomon's Island for a quick visit with longtime friend John Kretschmer, writer, philosopher, and offshore sail trainer, and share beer and crab cakes along with other cruising sailors. But it's just a quick visit as we are booked to haul the boat out for her first yearly maintenance at the Port Annapolis Boatyard. So we've had this boat now for a year. We're doing these gear review segments, including today we're going to look at the in-mast furling. It's a Selden system we have that's electrically operated, pulls the mainsail out of the mast where it's rolled up, and then you can put it back in the mast again whenever you want. So. We've really enjoyed it. It's the first time we've ever owned a boat with it, and I'll just give you a quick tour of how it works. Uh, we've got it set up here so there's the outhaul. When you pull on the outhaul, you're, is how you're going to pull the sail out. So I'll put it on the winch. Now this is an electric winch, so I'm going to cheat and use the electric feature. Push main out. So I'm going to push the main out button. The main will unroll the extrusion, and then I'm going to pull it out with the winch. So unroll a little. Pull a little, unroll a little, pull a little. And I continue unrolling it and pulling. We found we do tend to sail more when we've got this system than before we had the system because we're just more likely to get the sail out and uh, try, even though there's not maybe quite enough wind, but we'll give it a shot. We sail for half an hour, we put it away again. Kind of not a big deal. So this has been um, made us more likely to do it because it's just so easy. Now reversing it, if you want to put it away again, it's basically the same thing except backwards. We have put the main back in, we're going to wind it back up, but now instead of winching it, we just have to let it go on the winch. Now to put it away, we reverse the whole thing. We are going to let the outhaul off, so we take it off the cleat and get it ready to let it out. And at the same time as we let it out a bit, we're pulling it back into the mast. And it's disappearing. So when the battens go in one at a time, you can see the batten disappearing into the mast. That's a good time to reef it. So if you wanted to just make put one reef in, you pull the batten into the mast. And then once the batten's inside there, then it's at a good position to leave it reefed. So we've got five battens. I consider we've got five reefs in the mainsail. But of course, you can leave it pretty well anywhere else, so long as you don't leave it with the batten just as it goes into the mast. And we put it away. And that's it. The sail's all put away and reefed. There you go. OK, so in case the motor fails, we've never had any trouble with the motor, but the motor's in here. And in case you run out of electrical power or the motor failed or something, there's a little slot where you can put in uh, furling manual device that will rotate the mandrel that the sail is wound around. So the sail goes in the slot around the mandrel, which is what it's been doing. But you have to disengage the electric motor. There we are. So we're winding the sail away. There we go. So at the same time, you have to let go of the outhaul. Uh, and Cheryl is filming instead of letting go of the outhaul. But normally, we'd be letting go of the outhaul at the same time as you wind it in and put it away. That would take probably five minutes to put the sail away that way. We've really loved the system. We've had it for a whole year now. We'd never had it before. Uh, I would give it a thumbs up. Um, that's, as I say, it's a mixed system. So it's the Selden in-mass furling electrical option. Uh, as well as having these sails, the Elfstrom fully battened, vertical battened sails. So that's what we've tested, and I would say that in that sort of setup, it's just been completely flawless. We haven't had one problem in 10,000 miles. Well, cheers. We've had one whole year of cruising on distant shores, and We've just arrived in Annapolis, and it's time to celebrate after it's, what is it, 10,000 miles, I think? 10,000 miles? So that's pretty great. It's been a great year. We've seen some new amazing stuff, and 
met some wonderful people, and I'm glad to have you all along on the voyage. And cheers. You. Join us next time as we show you some of our boat projects and repairs, then head south on the first leg of our voyage to the Pacific. Thanks for watching. Your views, likes, comments, and shares help us a lot. If you'd like more in depth information and consultation, we invite you to check out the Distant Shores Cruising Club. Membership includes early access to videos, member only QAs, live chats, meetups, sailing opportunities, and many other benefits to help you prepare for your own adventure. Thanks again for your support. See you on the water!